Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn to a particular scripture tonight. Um, at least not yet. If you'd like to put your finger in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, we'll return there a little bit later. Here over the next week or so, you're going to notice, and I know sometimes it's best not to look at these, but uh, most often they kind of catch our eyes. Those magazine racks as you're waiting in the hour to check out, you know, of all those different magazines. And you're going to see that over the next few days that there are going to be special editions to those magazines that will really have a lot of pictorial uh, 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 articles in there of the highlights of 2012. They seem like they do that every year, the highlights of, of what happened, those things that, that really has made the news. I was thinking just of, of a few off the top of my head that I could almost think that will be there and I think uh, really of, of, of what is known as that diva named Whitney Houston and her untimely, what it seemed like, death will certainly be there. And I'm sure that there will be uh, made mention of, in 2012, of Hurricane Sandy and the devastation that it caused to New York and to, to uh, New Jersey, Delaware, down into Maryland. Uh, that will certainly make the headlines. I'm sure that there will be that of the school shooting there in, uh, in, in, in uh, Connecticut that will make the news. The, uh, probably the re-election of President uh, Barack Obama will, will be there as well as one of the highlights of 2012, the scandal of Penn State and the, the, the tragic uh, uh, loss of Joe Paterno, the long-term football coach. And there will be that of, uh, of the thoughts of, of, of the, the mind uh, prophecy calendar of the world ending that did not come to pass. I mean, there will be a lot of things that will be looked at as we look at 2012. And uh, these magazines, uh, not only do they look at what has happened, but some of them will do some predictions of what will happen in 5 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. And uh, it's interesting that in 1967, uh, some of the, the leading uh, 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 individuals, experts, predicted that by the turn of the century, that mankind, uh, oh, technology would have taken over so much that mankind wouldn't know work the way that he knew in 1967. They projected that, uh, that uh, in 1967 that the work week would go down to 27 hours a, a, a week and that it would leave us working, I'm sorry, 22 hours a week, and it would leave us working 27 weeks out of the year. Wow. The prediction was off. I don't know, Brother Craig, but that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but Brother Doug, it was off. And so we find that here, beyond the turn of the century, now in 2013, uh, uh, we find that uh, we are not sitting around thinking about what will I do with my leisure time. I have so much time on my hands. But really quite the opposite. We're quite busy people. We eat in a hurry. And if you, uh, you don't need to raise your hands, I, I, I can raise my hand, I'm, I'm guilty. I walk in a hurry, you say, excuse me, but I've really got to go, I, I've, I've got somewhere to be. We seem to always be in a hurry, and uh, I, I think sometimes uh, we, we uh, those experts missed the mark in 1967 uh, that, that we would have more time. But the fact of the matter is, that uh, really right now on this first day of 2013 is something we do have in front of us is time. I think we're probably thinking about that more than at other times of years of the year. We, we do have time. We don't quite have the time that they, 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 they projected or anticipated. Even in the busyness of life, we will do with our time what we want to do with our time. We will be as busy as we want to be. 
We will go the places we want to go, do the things that we want to do. And, and I think that it's very important for us to realize tonight that, that 365 days this year, will we live with joy at the end of this year at the Lord's Tarry, or will we live with regret? And right now is the time to make up our mind what we will do. Let's look at Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 verse 15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what, what the will of the Lord is. Be understanding what the will of the Lord is. I think that the Apostle Paul gave us some good things to ponder here. Some good things to ponder right at the beginning, the commencement of 2013. What will we do with our time? He tells us that we're to be wise, that we're to walk certain spec with. He tells us that we are to redeem the time because the days are evil. He said, and that we are to be mindful of knowing what the will of God is. And so here it is. Amen. I think that we need to realize something tonight that our time is limited. Our time is limited. And we need to be wise with what we do with our time. David said it this way in Psalms 39. He said, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. God, let me know what the measure of my days is. There will come a day where there will be no more breath in this body. There will become a day where the hands of time will no longer tick for me. God, I want to know how to spend my days. Lord, let me know that there is an end coming. And when that end comes, I want to be satisfied. And with joy, I want to be glad for what I did in the days that was given to me. Uh, for us, you know, uh, young people, uh, you young people here tonight, Nathaniel and Sasha and Daniel, Brianna, uh, you, you probably think, man, uh, 70, 80 years, that's a long time. I remember when I was your age, I used to think 40 was old. <laughs> and now, I get it so old. <laughs> Sister Rachel, you know, it's just not so old anymore. It goes by very quickly. And so the psalmist told us that we need to develop wisdom in our days. God, how am I going to spend my days? People Magazine, uh, a few years ago, I was reading some illustrations for tonight, and I came across this, that People Magazine a few years ago, they had an article that was called Dead In, Dead Ahead. And what they were doing in this article, they were trying to sell something. And they were trying to sell a clock that was based on this. It was based upon your sex, and it was based upon your age. And what you would do, you would program that into this, this clock, and it would tell you how many days that you have left. And they did it this way. They gave every man 75 years. And they gave every woman 80 years. And so you would buy this clock, program it if you're a male or female, and what your age is, and they would tell you how many days you have left. I did a little bit of math before church, and I figured this out, that I had 12,045 days left in my life if I make it to 75. 12,045. Really, that's not very many, Brother Justin. And so the psalmist David said that we were to number our days. Really, isn't that what, what uh, 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 the, this clock was doing? That they were selling for nineteen. Uh, I'm sorry, for ninety-nine dollars and ninety-five cents with shipping and handling. It would count down the days so that you would be aware of how many days that you had left because it was dead ahead. Your death was imminent and it would tell you how many days that you had. But I need to tell you something. That tonight none of us are guaranteed 75 or 80 years. We may not have them. So even to buy a clock, we're not guaranteed. Even to have that counting down our exact number, it would not even suffice tonight. Because we do not know that the, the psalmist David told us to teach us to number our days, but we're to be wise in our days. God, let me know that I'm frail. I, I may not make it to uh, 2014. God may take my life. And so I need to number my days. But if God is 
so gracious and blesses me with life, which I pray that He does. I enjoy this good gift of life. At the end of next year, Sister Chan, I with great uh, uh, happiness, I want to say that I've spent my days well. You know, I, I worked on Monday, and I had a patient that came in, and uh, they were saying something about the new year, and uh, I, I said, you know, well, they were saying how quickly it went by, and I said, you know, it did go by quick. But, but I really enjoyed this year. And I did. I enjoyed every season. We were very busy here at the church. It just seemed like we went from one thing to another. Then in our personal life, we had things going on. So it was going from one thing to another. It was a wonderful, wonderful year. And they looked at me and they said, you must be a happy person. And I thought, well, I want to be happy. I think it's really a choice. I think it's a choice that we choose. And really the joy of the Lord is our strength. And through it all, we can learn to trust in Him, can't we? And so it is our choice, even right now at the commencement of 2013, how will we spend our days? And I think that we need to know tonight that we need to make the most of every minute. I need to let you know something that Paul said something that was very important here in, 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 in uh, Ephesians. He said redeeming the, the, the time because the days are evil. I want you to know that Jesus Himself said that Satan is a thief and a robber. We think about Him robbing this and robbing that. But let me tell you what He wants to rob from you most of all is your time. He wants to rob your time from you. Next year, you will decide what you do. There are a lot of people that spend their New Year's in some bar getting drunk. What a waste of time. There are many that I know, they love going down to the, the racetrack and they love spending their money on gambling. They live for that. What a waste of time. And there are different people who waste their time and gossiping and rumors. And there's uh, those who waste their time uh, worrying about what the future will be, worrying about past mistakes. They have so much anxiety that that's all they spend their time doing is worry. And I want you to know something, that God does not want us to be robbed of our time. Right here in this very beginning of the year, and I heard something said, if you want to make change, psychologists have said that the best way to make change is radical change. Just do it. Just do it. If you've not been spending your time wisely the way that you should, amen, now is the time to make the change and do it wisely. Don't allow the enemy to rob time from you. <clears throat> do you remember Mary and Martha and Lazarus? Remember Jesus comes by and He sits down and Mary was sitting at His feet. And Martha, she was cumbered about with all kinds of care. You know, it wasn't that she was gossiping, gambling, sinning, doing so. She was doing good things. And she said, Master, don't you care that, that my sisters left me all alone to do this task by myself? And Jesus, what did He say? She has chosen the good place to be. You see, we can be busy in life doing not bad things, but good things but not doing the right things. They can be taking away all of our time. We can be so busy, but not doing what is important. Preoccupied with lots of things. Amen. I don't want to make that same mistake every day. Busy with everything else, but not taking time to spend with the Master. Not taking time to sit His feet. Busy. We live in an age where information is shooting off faster than it's ever been before. Social networks are rampant. I want to challenge us. Do we spend as much time with God as we do on our computer, social networks, and all these information sites that we come shooting at us? Really? Do we? God, help me to spend my days wisely. There was a medical doctor, Richard Swanson, who wrote a book and he discusses the major problems with anxiety and stress. He calls it overload. And he says that people are just plain overloaded. He said we commit ourselves to go here and there. We commit ourselves to lots of activities and demands. We commit ourselves 
to jobs where we make more and more money and have more and more things. Our basements are full, our garages are full, and then we're full of anxiety that somebody may, may break in and steal. So busy, 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 but busy with all the wrong things. And causing ourselves more anxiety than we need. This is a medical doctor. This isn't a minister talking. And he said that our closets are full, our garages are overflowing. We've gone on the debt to pay for things that we think that we simply must have. We get up early to fight traffic. We, we, uh, we experience intolerable work conditions because we need to make the money. He said, even as a doctor, he said, I am on overload. He said, so much information is coming at me. He said, just to keep up with my profession, I have to read 220 articles a month to be cutting edge. Wow. We're living in a society that just wants more and more. But tonight I need to tell you that we need to make sure that we're taking time for the most important. <coughs> the most important things. God doesn't want you loaded down with anxieties. God doesn't want you to have your calendar so crowded that you have no room or time for Him. God doesn't want you wandering aimlessly. But God wants you knowing what His perfect will is. I feel like I want everyone to hear that again. In this next year, 2013, God does not want you wandering aimlessly. But He wants you to know what His will is. Ephesians says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. God has you where you're at, with specific circumstances round about you because His will wants to be accomplished in you. Don't sit daydreaming, wondering this and that. Fulfill the will of God. Don't be unwise or foolish. Don't allow your time to be robbed simply just by wondering what I can do. But be fulfilled with the will of God that is at hand. Do something for God. You are only given a certain day and that is today. I pray that every one of us is given a year. I pray that every one of us is fulfilled at the end of the year. But it takes living each and every day, one day at a time, doing what God wants us to do to have fulfillment at the end of the year. Amen. I want to tell you that I've lived there. I'm glad that I can feel accomplishment. That I've done what I felt like God has wanted me to do. And embraced every day and every moment. I've not always lived every year that way. Amen. But I want to tell you that by experience, amen, thank God that with, with age, He gives us wisdom. Amen. And I don't have to live foolishly. But live every day fulfilling God's will. God wants you to establish what is priorities in your life. And I want to tell you something. I, with full confidence, can tell you that looking out here tonight, each one of you feel that God is priority in your life. That is why you're here Tuesday. After probably most of you are up late and have had a busy schedule in life with the holidays, you're here because you feel that God is important. And I want you to think about this as we're embracing this next year. As you make a decision about how you spend your day, who you spend your time with, what you'll spend your day doing, I want you to ask yourself this question, who and what is most important to me? That bottom line should be God and fulfilling God's will and living out God's Word is what's important for me to me. That is who I choose to spend my time with. That is how I choose to spend my time in every activity that I do. I want to do it for God because God, amen, He is the one that should be affecting our schedule. He is the one that should be affecting our relationship with others. He is the one that should be affecting our outlook on life. Listen, I want to tell you something. Every year perk up right now, 
If you want to fulfill what God has for you next year, you need to fulfill it in knowing that I want to do God's will. God, I want, to, I want to have a relationship with others that is in your will and treat others as you would have me to treat them. God, I want to spend my days doing what you have set before me. I want to make every decision to do what is wise according to you. Don't think, God, I want to do something for you. Do something for God right here, right now, in 2013. Do something for God now. Don't live daydreaming. Do it now. Every relationship you have, build it in the Word of God and through the Spirit of God. Every activity that you involve yourself in, do it in reflection to your relationship with God. Numbering your days. You may not need that clock. You may not make it, man, to 75. Lady, you may not make it to 80. So fulfill God's will right here right now. The days are fragile. And I know tonight I know that you're faithful. I'm encouraging you by saying this. But let's make up our mind from the beginning. God, rain or shine, I'm going to be in your house. Nothing else is going to take priority. When Sunday morning is open, I'm going to be there. When Sunday night is open, I'm going to be there. When Tuesday night is open, I'm going to be there. Why do you say that, Brother Seville? You just want people in the congregation. Well, sure I want you here. Because it's deeper than a number in the pew. <coughs> it is your spiritual condition. It is how you're choosing to spend it, your time and your days and your realization that every day is fragile and this life is fragile. And my faithfulness to God affects every relationship I have with my family and in my workplace. And as I'm faithful to God, others see that and it will affect them. And most of all, it affects my eternity with the Lord. <clears throat> Listen, if we make that our priority, Nothing will interfere with our church attendance. If we do that from the very beginning, nothing will interfere if we make that our priority to number our days and to keep those days as holy and grow through the things of God. Church will bring you growth. You may say, Brother Seville, I've heard the messages over and over. There's not much that you'll tell me that I haven't heard. Well, bless your wonderful, smart soul. <laughs> but God's Word says we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Yes. And if you're so spiritual, maybe you'll be a blessing to someone else through your knowledge. <coughs> I was being a little humorous. I, didn't think, I don't think that you think that. <clears throat> but we also need to make sure that we take time for prayer. Not just talk about it, but do it. Do it. Listen, pray for yourself. You need that. Pray for your church. They need that. Pray for those missionaries that God has called to go overseas because there's lonely days for them that only God can minister to them. Pray for our community that so desperately needs God and our nation that needs to change the course in which it's shrouded. We need men and women who will pray Spending our time wisely. It is, and I want to say this, spending time with our family. I want to tell every man in here, you need to take a date night with your wife. Find someone to watch your kids. Find someone to take care of some duties and get away. Because your relationship with your family is important. And you need to take time to do that. You need to take time to be with your children. Show them the love of God. It's not only through the Word of God, but show them the Word of God. Have devotions with them. Pray with them. But also take time to be with them. I'm not talking about your body being present. I'm talking about your mind and everything about you being present with them. You're only given one opportunity to sow seeds in the lives of those children that God has blessed you with. Take the time for it. 
Then I want to say this. For every one of you that have a job, when it's time to go to work, get up in the morning and go to work and be on time and don't call off work just because you feel like you need a day of rest. You schedule that ahead. You take the time off that is allotted to you and you go to work and you be faithful and you show the world what a relationship with Jesus Christ is all about. Hey, listen, I can say every one of us in here probably have things about our job that we don't like. You know, Sister Tina, do you ever get tired of people asking you for money? <laughs> and you know, when they bounce a check, I'm sure it's Sister Tina's fault. No. <laughs> and Brother Justin, when those shelves at Walmart aren't full, it's your fault. Brother Craig, when those potatoes aren't growing right, it's your fault. Brother Doug, it's your fault they're in prison. <laughs> And you know sometimes they come in there grumpy and they're sick. And you know what? Everything in the world is going wrong and it's my fault. Every one of us have things on our job. Brother Gray, all those people that are under you and you don't make them happy, it's your fault. But I want to tell you something. Let's spend our days wisely. Be there. Show them be faithful. Smile even when it's not the job that we want to do. Smile even when the day goes wrong and someone treats you wrong. You be faithful because you choose how you spend your day. You choose what your attitude and your decision is going to be like. Remember, it is up to us how we will spend 2013. Let's spend it wise and not foolish. In closing, I read a story of a young girl who went off to college. She actually really didn't like college once she got there, Sister Beth. <coughs> but she thought, if I can just make it through college, get married and have children. Well, she got married and Sister Jan, she had children. And you know those children sometimes got in her nerves. Hard to believe as an appearance. <laughs> and she thought, if I can just get them through school. Well, she just about had them through school. And Brother Eli, her husband, said to her, our kids are starting college and there's just not enough money. I need you to get a job until we can get the kids out of college. Well, Sister Stacy, she did that. She worked until finally the day comes. She went into her employer. And Brother Doug, she said to her employer, I'm going to quit my job. He looked at her brother Mike and he said, but you only have eight more years and you can have a fantastic retirement. So Jim, she said, I'll just make it through these next eight years so I can get that good retirement. <clears throat> Finally, eight years past my grade, she made it good. <coughs> her and her husband both retired at the same time. Sold their house, bought a little cottage, sat down on the porch, on the swing, Brianna looking at photo albums. Photo albums of the good old days. <laughs> They're good days. They're good days. And someday you're going to look back on them and realize that they're good days. Spend those days. I want to spend them for the Lord. I want to spend them seeing Mercury about the church grow. So, I want to spend that that when I get through this next year, I'm not looking just to muddle my way through or push my way through. I think, can't wait to get through this. No, I want to spend every moment and enjoy it. And at the end of the year, I want to say, it's been a good year. And God has helped me be wise with every man and every relationship. And everything that I could do for His kingdom, God has helped me. But your work starts right here. I did a number. Let me see if I can find that number. That we have 
and I'm not sure where I wrote down that now. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to find it in my terrible handwriting notes. I did a number. Let me just grab my phone here. I tell you this number. This is the number I want to give you. 8,760. 8,760. Now, let me minus from that 21. And this is the number right now. 8,739. That's how many more hours you have left in 2013. 8,000. 739. That really doesn't seem like a very big number to me. Not a very big number at all. So how will you spend those almost 9,000 hours? The choice is yours. Once again, let me just read this to us, what Paul said. He said, seeing then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Know what God's will is for right now, this moment. Tomorrow, redeem the time. The, the enemy tonight is a robber and a thief, and he will try to rob your time first. But tonight, the good news is God has given us a base notice to watch out for that robber. I just read on the news today, I don't know if you read this, Brother Graham, Fox News, they were saying that an airplane pilot was flying over the city going for a landing. And when he was flying, he looked down and seen a robber breaking into a house and reported. If you knew a robber was coming, wouldn't you do your very best to secure everything, to watch, to make sure he didn't steal. I want to tell you there was going to be a robber in 2013. And he is going to try to steal your time. But secure it. Protect it. So that he cannot commit to steal. Sister Beth, if you come to the piano, I know it's gotten a little bit later than what I anticipated. But I want to do this tonight. If Sister Beth comes, I know the altars are still kind of crowded. I wonder if we could just make our way up here and just lift up our hands. And just make a commitment to God that God, I'm not going to allow the enemy to steal my time. God, I'm going to be wise. I'm not going to spend this whole year going aimlessly, not knowing what your will is, but I'm going to fulfill your will each and every day. I'm going to know that there's frailty in these days that I'm not even guaranteed them. But if you bless me with them, God, almost those 9,000 hours, I will spend every one of them wisely for you. If you make that commitment, I wonder if you just slip out of your seat tonight. Come, stand, and slip up your hands. Make that commitment to the Lord. You don't do it for me. You do it for God. God, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful to your house. I'm going to be faithful to your word. I'm going to be faithful to prayer. I'm going to be faithful to you in every relationship, God. Because I want you to be glorified. Amen. Let's come. Let's be wise tonight and make those commitments. Amen. All around the house, could you just hold up your hands? Amen. Make that commitment to the Lord. Tell Him how much you love Him and how committed you want to be to Him this year. Amen. Mindful of His will. 